Hey everyone, David C. Anderson from the Knife Center coming at you from my home studio, or at least my basement. Because like a lot of you people, I'm actually working from home at the moment. And with that said, it's actually a perfect time to make sure our knives are in tip-top shape. Part of that is sharpening. Now, for those of you who may be a little bit fuzzy on sharpening, maybe it's not your forte, you're not the best at it, this is the first in a series of videos that's going to go over step-by-step -step what you need to get your knives razor sharp. Let's do it. Now the concept of sharpening is actually pretty simple, but there are a ton of different ways to get the job done. So today we're going to be looking at the traditional method, at least traditional here in the US, of using whetstones, as well as taking a look at some ceramic sharpeners and diamond plates as well. The process is similar, but there's going to be a few things you do a little bit differently between all of them. But first, let's talk about a little, a little bit of concept when it comes to sharpening. Now think of the edge of your knife as a V, or an in inverted V in this case. And when we're sharpening, we're gonna be removing material from one side until we gradually push a little bit of metal past the apex and over to the other side. That's what we call a burr. Once we get that, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side until we push it, that burr back over. And then we're gonna alternate sides one, two, one, two with progressively finer stones until we get the level of refinement and sharpness that we're looking for. It's not really that much more complex. Just requires a little bit of practice, a little bit of muscle memory to build up, and we've got all the time in the world right now to make sure our edges are in tip-top shape. Now, the first thing I'm gonna show you here is actually one of the first whetstones I ever bought. It's actually a combination. This is the Smith's Trihone, or three-sided knife sharpener. This comes with three separate grits integrated into one unit. We've got a coarse stone, a medium, and a fine stone. And the medium and fine stones are actually what we call Arkansas stones. And all that is, it's a, uh, it's a United States originated mineral, which is easily quarried, so it makes a pretty affordable sharpening stone. And it's a very traditional way, a very traditional material used in sharpeners in this country. Now typically this actually comes with a base. I'm not quite sure where my base is. You could still use this freehand, but I wanted to demonstrate it with a base. So I have another unit here that's of similar concept that we're gonna use today. So I've got what I need to get started right here. I've got my stone, I've got a knife. This is actually the Victorinox Compact, which I think is a pretty criminally underrated Swiss Army knife. Really, you ought to check it out. It's nice and slim, packs a lot of different functions in there. It's very cool. Now, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is actually oil our stone. Now, a lot of these sets actually come with their own included oil, but if you've run out of that or if yours didn't come with it, maybe you've got an old stone, mineral oil actually works really well. I like this for more than just the usage with a sharpening stone too. This actually works really well to lubricate your knives, your folding knives, lubricate the pivots. It's food safe, it's cheap, it's widely available. You can find it all kinds of different places. I think I found this at my local hardware store and it just works for so many different things. You can even treat a cutting board with it. Really handy thing to have around very multi-purpose uses. Now, first thing, like I said, we're actually gonna oil the stone. Not a whole lot. Once we've got that on there, we could just kind of go ahead with our blade, um, but I usually like to just smooth it out just a little bit. Probably doesn't make much of a difference, it's just what I've always done. Now, the purpose of that oil is actually to lubricate the surface of the stone, and it's supposed to help prevent particles of metal from the blade as you're sharpening from getting trapped in the pores of the stone. Of course, you're gonna wanna clean this after you've uh, done your sharpening as well, and that can also help with that. Some folks like to use water instead of oil, and that certainly is an option. Some folks will even swear by using it dry with no oil. As with anything, there's no completely right or wrong answer, so we're gonna go with the most traditional version here, and that is using this, uh, this oil, mineral oil in this case. Now, when it comes to actually putting your blade to the stone itself, this is where things get a little bit tricky and it takes a bit of practice because this is a freehand operation. Now, most blades, at least on a production scale, on production knives in this country, come with what we call a 40 degree inclusive edge angle. All that means by inclusive is that when added up, the two sides of the V equal 40 degrees. So we got 20 degrees and 20 degrees on each side. So we need to hold our blade at a 20 degree angle to the stone as we're going. Now you can practice with a protractor if you wanna get your uh, angle just right. But a lot of units, including that Smith's unit that I showed you earlier, actually come with a small little plastic ramp that'll show you exactly the guide that you need to follow. And you just kind of rest your knife blade against it and carry that angle through with your arm as you move up the blade. 
So like I said, first step, we wanna work one side and we until we get that burr on the other side. So I'm gonna place my edge here at the back at a roughly 20 degree angle and slowly, not too much pressure, smoothly move out towards the tip like so. Angling the blade as you move so that the actual edge remains roughly perpendicular to the motion you're going. And we're gonna do this over and over until we build that burr up on the opposite side. It shouldn't take too long because this is a pretty thin, uh, thin edge and fairly soft metal on these, these Swiss Army knives, so it shouldn't take too long to get where we need to be. So after a few strokes, we're gonna check the edge. And as you're feeling for the burr with your finger, you wanna be very careful. So if we're, we're laying the stone on this side of the edge, means the burr will be coming up on this side. So I use my thumb to sort of, thumb or fingers to sort of feel along, pushing away from the edge. And you're gonna learn what it feels like to have that little bit of a burr sticking out. Looks like I've got it here up at the, uh, up near the belly area, but the area back near the heel is almost there. Use a little bit more work. Now a quick little trick, if you're not sure if you're hitting the edge angles just so, you can always take a, uh, a, a black marker, such as a Sharpie, I know that's a brand name, uh, but you can color in the actual edge itself and then go through the motions a few different, uh, a few strokes and look at it and see where the, the marker has actually been removed. And if you're hitting it along the whole sharpened edge, you know you're in good shape. So let me uh, finish up here and raise the burr completely off this side. Looks like I've got the burr where I need it to be. So now we're gonna flip the knife over and instead of placing it at the closest side to you and working outward, you're gonna place it on the far side and work towards yourself. Be careful, of course, you wanna keep your digits out of the way so you don't get uh, in the way of the blade. Set your angle and repeat. And you wanna try and make sure you've taken roughly the same number of strokes off of this side as you did when you were doing the first part of it because we wanna keep that edge in the center of the blade as much as possible. Remember, don't push down too hard when you're doing this for a couple of reasons. One, you could actually flex the blade too much and on a softer steel or a more brittle steel, I should say, if you're really pushing down and you hit part of the, hit an angle or something, you might get a little bit of chipping if you're pushing really hard. But the other thing is if you're pushing really hard, it's harder to maintain a more consistent angle actually. So just a little bit of pressure, not much, so that you can do it smoothly and repeatably. All right, now that I've been able to get consistently get a burr on both sides, I'm going to come back to the start. And this is where things are a little bit open to interpretation. You're going to find what works for you. For me, I, I like to take it back to the original side, give it another five strokes. And then from there, I'm going to alternate strokes doing one, one, two, two, three, two, so on and so forth. And I want to hit this once I've even that first five is going to even out that that burr just a little bit. And then by alternating strokes, I'm gonna be refining the edge that I've gotten. And I wanna do, for me personally, I like to do about 20 strokes per side. So let's go through that now. All right, now that we've run through that, you can kind of take a look at your edge, see how we're doing. And if there are any kind of aberrations, you can go back. If there are, are some chunks that are taken out of this blade, I should have said, if these edges are really far gone, you're gonna to wanna to start with the really coarse section. But for most cases, unless you've got some chipping, you're probably not going to need that. So that's why I started with the medium grit here. We're good to go right now, so I'm going to move on to the finer grit stone. Now, since we've already set our bevel uh, on the, the heavier grit stone, I'm not going to go through working up a burr on each side. From here, we're just refining the edge. This finer grit stone is essentially a tighter scratch pattern because that's what all these sharpeners are doing. They're creating scratches on your blade. It has a tighter scratch pattern than the medium stone. So we're just gonna go through, I'm gonna do again 20 strokes per side and see how we're doing. Now, obviously the finer the stone you go, the better your final edge is gonna be. If you're just getting started, I wouldn't worry about that too, too much. Uh, just stick with something like this that's going to give you a range of grits. And then at the end, the blade could actually benefit from a little bit of a stropping, but that's actually something we're going to be going over in another video. But now we actually have to test our edge. Right, let me move this to the side. And I've actually got a bit of copier paper here. Now, it's a bit of a no-no in some circles, uh, actually testing your edge on a piece of paper because like cardboard, paper is fairly abrasive and you can affect your edge with it but hopefully we're gonna be getting the knife sharp enough that it's not gonna make that big a difference. But you can actually learn a lot by cutting through paper, 
in the process you want to hit all of your edge that way you can find out if you have any dull or flat spots that you may have missed and you need to go back over so we're actually in pretty good shape here the edge isn't uh, super polished because this isn't a super fine stone that we've got here, but it does a pretty good job, certainly serviceable. And for a lot of folks out there, you're going to be able to get something with a little practice that's actually better than a lot of factory edges out there. So you're gonna, it's definitely going to be an improvement, and it's certainly going to be an improvement if you've never sharpened your knife and have used it an awful lot. So. All right, so that's how we sharpen one type of edge, that being a flat ground blade. This also works really well on hollow ground blades, but you can also do a Scandi grind with this type of method. Right here, I have got a Condor Pterosaur, which uh, you may have seen our review of this knife. We did this, uh, we did a shootout between this and the Mora Garberg. Um, it can use a little bit of attention on the edge. Now, the advantage of a Scandi grind is it essentially comes with a built-in angle guide. You simply have to lay the blade flat on the stone and you don't have to guess because you can actually use the grind of the knife to tell you exactly where the angle needs to be. Other than that, it's the exact same process as a, uh, any other type of knife. You just have the advantage of that grind that you're able to follow through with as you move down the stone. Very easy to do and even less guesswork thanks to that Scandi. So for true beginners, this might be even easier. All right, so that's your garden variety whetstone that comes with a base. Uh, maybe not garden variety. A lot of the garden variety stones out there are just a stone. They may or may not come with a case. They may be a little more portable than this. This is certainly a, a bench stone style of whetstone. But another one I really like for portability is this little item from Wazoo Survival Gear. This is the Viking Whetstone Pendant. It's really cool. Just a small oil stone there, which this type of whetstone sometimes is called an oil stone. A uh, small whetstone that's on a, uh, a leather thong means you can wear it very comfortably and take it just about anywhere so you can always have that with you. All right, now I want to talk about two more types of devices that the concept is very similar, uh, but you're going to use them just a little bit differently. Both of these are portable units. First here, I have the Spyderco Double Stuff. You can see it comes in a its own leather case. And this essentially uses the same material as their sharp maker, only in stone form. You've got medium and fine sides here. Now this type of stone, apart from being portable, is not gonna use any oil. You're, you're just gonna use this dry. And when you're a little more accomplished, you're a little more comfortable, you'll just be using this in your hand. Although, of course, be very careful when you're uh, on the stroke coming towards yourself. But all the same concepts apply, same types of angles. Um, as with any of these, uh, like I said, they work really well on hollow grinds, they work really well on flat grinds and Scandi grinds. If you have a convex grind where it convexes all the way down to the, uh, the, zero, the zero edge itself, you're going to want to use something a little bit different than one of these. Uh, something like this will work, but you will kind of affect that grind. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And we're going to be going over that in some future videos in this series. Now the other advantage of this unit that comes with its own little leather uh, slip case is it's got essentially its own strop built in, which again, stropping, that's another episode. All right, now I wanna talk about diamond sharpeners. Now this, they can come in a wide variety of different form factors. You can have the bench top versions as well as more portable versions. This is actually one of the DMT Diafold series. It's a bit of an older one. I've had it for quite a few years. I think the modern ones actually have clear plastic handles as opposed to these color coded ones. Uh, they've still got the color coding underneath the plate itself. Uh, but when I mention plate, rather than a stone that's either quarried or a synthetically made stone like some of the uh, that Spyderco piece right there, we've actually got a steel plate with diamond particles embedded. Diamond, of course, is one of the hardest materials out there, and it's certainly harder than, than most steels out there as well. Now, the key to using any kind of diamond sharpener is pressure. Now, I know earlier I told you you wanted to maintain a fairly moderate pressure, not too heavy on the, uh, the standard whetstone. That's even more important when it comes to a diamond stone because the harder you push, you're more likely to actually tear those diamonds out of the plate itself. But other than that, it's, it's used exactly the same way, just no oil again here. You're gonna use this one dry. And these portable diafold units, I find really handy because you can take them anywhere. They make keychain sized ones as well for another portable option. But it's the same thing. You're just, you just don't have a base with these portable units. You're gonna wanna set your angle and go through all the same steps, easy as pie. Well, that's all I've got to show you in this edition of how to sharpen a knife. 
We're gonna have more of these coming up in the future, going over some different methods of sharpening, so keep sticking around for those. If you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. But hopefully this gives you a good primer. If you're a little unsure about sharpening, you're a little bit of a novice, hopefully this gives you what you need to be a little more confident in getting started to do what you need to do to keep your knives in tip top shape. Now, if you need to get your hands on some good sharpening gear or another good knife to sharpen, we're gonna leave links in the description below that'll take you over to knifecenter.com. As of right now, our warehouse still is shipping orders out, which is fortunate for us. I'm here at home because we're socially distancing as much as we can, but we're very fortunate to still be able to be in business and servicing you guys. Make sure you're signed up for our knife rewards program while you're at our site as well, because the only thing that beats a new knife or some new gear is some free money to spend on your next purchase. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. I hope you're all are staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.